Hello everybody, welcome back. We are playing some Jax Caitlyn timelines. Uh, I've seen a lot of timeline decks floating around with the new equipment cards, and I wanted to give this deck list a try. I found it kind of just like searching around for different decks and stuff, and I'm a big fan of Caitlyn, and I wanted to give Jax a try. Now, this deck I think has a lot of significant differences from the main timelines deck that's been running Trundle and Orn. Uh, Orn's obviously like a much bigger unit as a finisher. Trundle, you get a lot of value out of the pillar, the ice pillar, and you also run Revna in that deck. Uh, this deck's a lot more aggressive, looking more to like go wide and play more like uh, the Aphelios um, Widening Light deck almost. We have a ton of uh, one drops. We have three Forge Chiefs, two Zonai Urchins, two Boom Boons to help with the, get the Chumpers as well, right? Like a lot of really aggressive units. And we, we peek out at four mana, which I think is kind of strange. I want to figure out what units to put in here above that. I think you should probably look to figure out something else. I changed this deck list around. Uh, I think I cut one copy of Catch and one copy of, um, what was it? Uh, one copy of Timewinder that was in here as well, which I think was just to get rid of extra concurrent timelines. And I, so I got rid of those two cards to put in two copies of Blue Travelers because it's just such a good card in Timelines decks. Like, I'm, I'm even wanting to put this up to three at some point. But this is the deck list I played yesterday, and I had like 13 games or something with just about a 70% win rate. So it's feeling pretty good at the moment, and so I figured I'd show this one on stream. I like to play like the more competitive decks and stuff, and this one seems to be performing pretty well for me so far. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I'm really, really excited about some of the synergies with this Timelines deck. I've never played Timelines before. Like, it's just not like really my thing. It's not even one of those decks I hate, I hate playing against, right? Like, I do not like playing against Kaisa or Thralls, but Timelines I don't mind playing against. It's just not my style to play. Uh, but this is a lot of really, really cool synergies with the Timelines. Uh, obviously, like, once you get to pick up the extra static units, like, your your whole goal is to just do unfair things, right? Like, pick the best four drop out of the three options or whatever, and get the value from the original card. But with ca cards like Piltov and Castaway and Combat Cook, they get pumped up so huge with their equipment on top of it, as well as their other value. Like, Combat Cook, he could, becomes whatever four drop with the Improvise, with the Forge. Like, this is a huge card. So, like, Aloof Travelers and Combat Cook are, like, insane in this deck. Uh, and I'm going to just run over our champions one more time real quick. I really like the champions in this deck. I don't know if it's the best, but Kaylin I think is just like a really solid 3 drop. Obviously she has a lot of play in other timelines decks. She just gets a lot of value even as she, the uh, time goes on. She doesn't like fade away in power because she can still get those traps and everything. With the equipment you can give her scout, which is insanely cool. And Jax is actually kind of an interesting card in this deck as well. He feels like an interesting spot in the 2 drop where he... He's a pretty good champion, just for a 3-2 quick attack. But he also uh, levels up pretty quickly in this deck with the Improvise. And so, yeah, it's not bad at all. Feels pretty solid. Once you get him leveled up, he can actually do a lot of damage, because a lot of your units are going to be equipped. I'll just pass here. We don't need to burn our Sun Eye Urchin here yet. We can probably just play Jax next turn. I don't know if we're particularly worried about running into a Mystic Shot, but that's not the end of the world if it is. Oh my gosh, I just wanted to take a drink and I just have water. I thought I had tea. I panicked on my mom. I'm like, what am I drinking? Nope, just water. Uh, so we can't block that no matter what we play, so we're just going to develop our jacks. I would like to see if there are other cool jacks next round that don't revolve around uh, timelines, because he seems like a cool champion. I really, really enjoyed Orn when I played him the other day. But timelines right now is just pretty, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, right now, like... We're, we're just playing our solid cards. We don't have timelines to help do unfair things. They don't either, though, so right now we're putting up a really good attack. Both of our champions have quick attack, which is so nice. Next turn, I might just play aloof flat, even if we can't find our timelines. We could probably get rid of their Vi, I imagine. It's probably one of their more expensive cards. In B and Z, I don't really know if there are too many great units you want to play. So, like, you know I was telling you I want to... Um mess around with cards above the 4 drop in our slot, right? Because we peek out at Combat Cook and Loof Travelers. I'm really interested in figuring out if there's some option from PNZ to play that will get a little bit more value at the, at the high end, kind of like to match the Ice Pillars of the other Timelines decks. I don't know if it's going to be possible, like I don't know what you'd want to run. This is fantastic. I don't know how we really want to slow play us at all. I might even just like sacrifice our Caitlyn. I really don't want to go too far behind on Uh, health here. If this is how it's gonna go, I might just play Sauna Urchin in light of a Kathia, actually. I think this is fine. Maybe this is getting greedy. 
Okay, actually, that's actually really good. But now it's just a matter of we could go for timelines, Piltover and Castaway to start getting that value. Or Piltover Peacemaker, keep our Caitlyn alive. But here we take four. Maybe that's a little bit over the top. Maybe we should just go like this. We're still taking six damage, though. I don't think we need to keep Caitlyn alive. We have another one in hand. Let's just go like this. And then we'll get our Pilt of Castaway value. We also have another Caitlyn in hand, obviously. But next turn, I'm probably going to aloof Travelers. I want to get rid of their big threats. Combat Cook's also fantastic to help put up the pressure. So, like, our Peltoven Castaway here, he would be a 2-1. He'd be a 4-1. That's it, he'd be a 4-1. But now we can put it on something like our Fuzzy Caretaker, right? Give my support ally plus 3, plus 0 this turn. Like, that's insane. Um, so we could, like, buff up our Caitlyn next turn. Something like that. Like, that's so cool. Obviously, still only 2 health, but... Like, a 5-2 Overwhelm that gives your ally plus 3, plus 0? That seems pretty decent. Uh, I really just want to rip aloof here, don't I? Yeah, probably. King of Lifeblade, is, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that's actually insane. Look, Once you get equipment on King of Lifeblade, like if you play what, a combat cook, you improvise and forge a King of Lifeblade, like that is so good. I will just jam them in. I know we're going to lose our Fuzzy Caretaker, but getting 5 lifesteal feels really good. Unless they burn a removal spell. Honestly, if they play a big unit, we could even give our Fuzzy Caretaker a challenger. Again, I'm kind of worried about running into another Mystic Shot. Because obviously, like, I'm, I'm confident they'd run all three copies. Okay, 5-3. Uh, we're a little bit scared of that next turn. So let's just draw and challenge here. I'd rather kill this guy and leave the 3-1 up. That could probably die to trap next turn anyway. Worst comes to worst. We can just Mystic Shot it, so we'll be fine. That's a cool card. I like that. We run a few copies of that as well, but... That's a little bit of a punish for us, because it's going to be difficult for us to deal with. Yeah, actually, this guy can't even block that Fearsome unit. Okay, I'm actually really happy they developed. Jax is going to be quite a bit of damage here. He's going to be giving me plus one, plus one for each yes, equipped allies. So he'll become like a 7-6. That's a lot. But we can drop our own combat cook and he'll get pretty huge. Uh, I'm going to take the scout. And obviously the other one doesn't let us block, so that wouldn't be too great. Uh, this is just a huge unit, right? Yeah, I guess we'll just put the huge unit here. Hmm, how are we getting out of this one? It's kind of tricky. I guess, because like the quick attack on these two is really bad for us. Only Jax is overwhelmed though. We could just buff up our Kinku Life Blade, but that doesn't feel fantastic. Let's just improvise here. Uh, I like the Fearsome. That's not bad, but not really effective here, I don't think. I think we'll just go the Quick Attack. None of the units are ever going to be small enough, really, to care about Fearsome. So we can stop a lot of damage here. We can trade... I don't think it matters to block these two, right? Like, we'll take, we're taking so much damage if we... I mean, I guess we could go here. If that goes into Get Excited range, that doesn't seem very safe. Next time we can try to head in with our Kinko Lifeblade. We can give Kaelin Scout as well. We can give the Kinko Lifeblade Scout. Any of those are fine. But we'll only have seven mana to work with. I would like 
Another Forge Master. Okay. Three, six. So maybe we should go five mana and the rake on Caitlyn to try to get those traps. Maybe we should go the rake on the lifesteal. None of these are very good, huh? Uh, I don't really think it matters. What are we scared of here? They only have two cards in hand, so like... If we can get to next turn, we'll have a Mystic Shot available. We should have a good amount of Caitlyn Traps. We'll play Caitlyn, and I want to decide what they do here. Playing the Rake on Kinku Lifeblade puts him out of Mystic Shot range, so that's true. But it'll also put Caitlyn out of Get Excited range, and then we'll get four Traps. She'll be a 5-4. That's pretty good. So they'll be forced to block her, right? That seems pretty decent here. I know we could gain a life, but they only have two cards in hand. I think, like, we're looking more to kill their board. Maybe that's a mistake. Hey, um, yeah, okay, maybe maybe we gain, we gain four life from the first deck. And then, so yeah, we gain eight life. Maybe that's a mistake. But either way, this is a cool play, so <laughs> we'll roll with it. They only have one card in hand, right? The only thing I'm worried about is the overwhelm. I'm, I, I don't know why they put the pan pan on Jax. That seems kind of silly. That's pretty good for them. Yeah, I guess in hindsight I'd rather have a lot more life. Because Caitlyn could have attacked anyways. And like, maybe, maybe the extra traps aren't a huge deal. But they're just top decking and then they'll have some equipment to mess with. If they develop... We're probably not dead if they open attack. Like, um, auto equip means when summon- yeah, okay, so they just put it back on. Yeah, that seems strange. I wonder why they did that. Okay. Uh, that's the scariest thing here. If we hit Jax- oh, they didn't draw a single trap. That's such a big punish. That's a bit brutal. That's actually really annoying because we can't miss a shot anything. Like, if we hit one trap anywhere, we would be fine. Dang, he's huge. Okay. I guess we have to go like this, this, this. Wow, that's really annoying. I'm so upset at that. Is there any way out of this? Hmm. It's a bit unfortunate. Well, jinkies. That's okay. Yeah, I guess we should have gone for the the lifesteal. Man, I guess that's unfortunate. That's like definitely my bad. But um I don't know. At the moment I wasn't I wasn't also thinking that I was thinking um I don't know why it just didn't click in my head that we'd get the scout attack, but also the plus two buffs. Like that just wasn't thing I was thinking of. I was thinking like just just a double attack, right? So I'd like, oh we can gain four life or plant four traps. Like we get out of that situation if a single flash bomb hits. Which is unfortunate. But obviously you can't bank on that all the time. So I will definitely accept that as a mistake. But you can see our deck does some pretty cool things in those mirror matches. Brom Orn. That's pretty spicy. Okay. Another really good hand. But we just want we want timelines so bad. Uh, we are attacking on three. So I'll keep Caitlyn. We should be good if we find our loofs. Yeah, that's like such a big card in these matchups. Oh, 
All right, that's what I'm talking about. Honestly, it's not even like a huge deal for this turn. Uh, if they develop, they don't have any like damage, so yeah. Well, we're just gonna take the two from him. That doesn't really matter too much, though. Obviously, we're not gonna block with Jax. He's just gonna trade into it, or like he's gonna get the draw next turn. But the two damage, I don't think, should be a huge deal in this matchup. Like we're not gonna get burnt down. So I don't particularly care about our slow start. I guess what could we be scared of is the equipment plus Braum plus the fish hook challenger item. I can't remember the card name, but it's like the burst that gives you challenger. We're just gonna play Caitlyn here, just play our cards. Next turn we'll get the aloof. I do think Orn looks really cool. I don't know what he is, but he's cool. Oh, why is Ash no Orn? Alright, uh, how much do we care about uh, Brittle Steel? Or a Troll Chant? Eh. Okay, Troll Chant would be a little bit annoying. Sweet. Okay. Oof. I was I was gonna be probably pretty upset if they had chill chant there. Um, we push three damage and get the traps going, kill a unit. So like, it's really good that it resolves for us. Like, I don't know if it's worth the risk though. We can just wait a turn. We're not in a rush, I suppose. Get our aloof chant down. Go into our next attack with Mystic Shut Up in case something goes wrong. So maybe we should just pass there. But it's a, it's a really nice attack to pass up. Well, we're losing our jacks either way, so let's just discard something. This is also just a really huge unit, isn't it? That's also really cool. I don't know how often we're going to use it, though. This is just always going to be bigger. Nice, we got rid of one Orn. How are we going to kill him next turn? I don't know if we are going to be able to kill him anytime soon. We'll go for the extra damage on the equipment. Oh, maybe that's actually really cool. Yeah, I think we'll just take the elusive here. And I'll just put Quick Attack on Kalos Brom Crusher. And then we can Mystic Shot if they try to block with Brom. Then they freeze. They get some extra damage, but or but it won't count as any extra damage on Brom, that's true. Yeah, I think I'm okay with just Quick Attacking then. Putting the light of Kathia on the Kalos Bone Crusher. Okay, that guy's getting huge. I would like to see them go below freeze mana or chill chant mana again. Okay, that's very good, very good. We'll just get in like this. I don't know if we're ever killing him. <laughs> Okay, so it's getting so cold out. It just like made me think with like the brown Christmas skin and everything. Um, it's it was like a hundred degrees just a few weeks ago. Now it's down into the forties today, and so I'm like in my like I'm like pants and a jacket and everything for like the first time. But we just went to the grocery store this morning, and there's this cute little bird. He's like got a little like orange witch hat on, and he's got this cute little checkered tie. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I don't really know if I want to take damage here. Do we ever just mystic shot this guy? 
Again, I don't think it matters, right? What do they have in Freljord? Like, Ice Shard? So maybe we'll just leave this guy alive. We'll block the Overwhelm, I suppose, and let this go since it's more likely to die to Caitlyn Traps in the future. Ah, okay. That's interesting. I mean, I guess we'll just use do this, but there's no reason really not to. We can try to go just wide now, I guess, is one play. Support, Grimma, support ally, plus two, plus zero, and ephemeral. Meh. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough. I guess, I guess we'll just quit this guy, huh? <laughs> okay, I'd really like a big unit soon. This is what I mean, like, I do not like these Forge Chiefs in this deck. I'd really rather have, like, some six chops. Oh. Dang. Okay. Come on, people. Let's make tomorrow today. How scared are we of them playing that? How, how scared are we of them playing that again? <laughs> um. That's a card. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. Again, it's kind of annoying if they have... Dang, this is kind of difficult. Okay, we just gotta go Challenger here. Push as much damage as possible. Can we kill them this turn? We're gonna pull... Brom, so he doesn't take any damage. This puts him down to one if this goes through. And then we can hopefully Mystic Shot for the win. Alright, let's go. GG. Yeah, so, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about trying to find some different cards to put in your in the late game. Okay, I think I, I, th I was trying to tell a story earlier, but I don't think I ever actually did. I'm considering putting Augmented Experimenter in as our bigger unit, but I don't know if that's ever good for like the discard to draw. Like, it feels pretty solid, I think, to refill your hand in the late game if you're running out of juice, but I don't know. It seems kind of sketch. Because like sometimes you'll have all those rare, like random equipment stuck in your hand, and you won't want to get rid of them. But like, do you have the time to replay them all out? I don't know. Poppy Jacks, that's kind of cool. Finding some cool decks today. Timelines in the open hand is awesome, and I will keep Combat Cook, because he's just like literally one of our best cards in the deck. A bit slow is a bit uh, difficult, because Poppy Jacks, I imagine, is going to be a pretty aggressive Demacia Rally deck that we kind of want to be applying our own pressure. Double Combat Cook is still very strong, though. Like, our turn 4, turn 5, we already know it's going to be really good. Because these guys get so huge with the Improvise and Forge, plus the Timelines buff. My heroic last dance never seemed to stick. I think I'll just play our Pelt of and Castaway next turn. I'm terrified of running Caitlyn into a... Uh... Uh, Sharp Sight. Oh my gosh, that's actually really good, isn't it? Five four elusive on turn three with fearsome, just in case they have them to play sharp sight <laughs> on a small unit. That's pretty good. It can also block Jacks next turn. Obviously, like you have to be wary of pump spells, but like burning them down by five is really really good for us because we're obviously so driven by the value that we get from concurrent timelines. We still run, I think, triple get excited, triple mystic shot, no? It's like, that's a lot of burn. At the very least, I think we run triple mystic shot. Yeah, if they open attack, I'm gonna not, I'm not even gonna risk the damage, will I? We're gonna make it difficult for them to deal with this. Nice, we got our Dragon's Fetish Strike, that's actually really good. That makes it much more difficult for him to deal with our Monk. The day I find that hero. 
We'll just play Comic Cook this turn. He's a huge unit. I really want to play Champions, but... I don't know. I think Comic Cook is just better. With the Overwhelm, yes. Challenger is very tempting to go after a Champion. But this guy's just huge. Well, he's gonna Forge, right? Like, this guy's just gonna be huge. 7-5 Overwhelm, Chump Wump. So like, even a sharp slate won't kill it onto the on the three two, like that's so insane. Oh, what is that? I don't know that card. Tempting prospect. Pick a follow or equipment from the top four cards of your deck. That's kind of cool. Like a little mini tutor card. I'm okay, I like it. Oh, she has a French accent. That's really cool. I don't know why. Maybe it's maybe it, might, it sounded French to me. Okay, that's fine. Alright, like, if they have to burn a Sarp Slight and a unit to deal with that, I think we're pretty okay with that. And again, they're down to 8 health now. Do we ever kill Poppy here? I think we can just kill Poppy right now. When they don't have mana for a pump spell. I think that's probably more valuable than saving it to go face, because our hand's looking so good right now. Again, maybe that's another weird call, but I think it's probably worth it. Like, another aloof here is just so good. Get rid of either a rally or a concerted strike. This guy's the biggest. But Vanguard first blade... Oh yeah, Vanguard first blade will just die. Let's just go with this guy. <laughs> he just surrenders. Let's go. What a game. That felt really good. Like, that's what I mean. Like, those turns four with, the, like, the Forge Chiefs and the aloof Shadowers are so good. All right, into gold one. I didn't get to grind the game as much as I really wanted the first few days of the expansion, so. Like last night, like I said, I think I played like 13 games with this deck. So we are kind of a little bit. Hopefully if we win, what, the next the next two games, we'll get at least very close to platinum. And then I'll finish it off later today when I get to play it on my own. I really want to try to find another good Gwen deck. I know there's a lot of spiders running around, but like, could you, could you run Jax? Jax Gwen? Probably not. I don't know if Shadow Isles alone will offer enough support for that. But with the Weapon Masters, maybe you're fine. And then obviously you'll get like the Hallowed buffs for stuff like the Scout buff. Or the Scout, like the Break. And the Overwhelm. Like that seems pretty solid. Maybe some, there's something there. Sweet. Looks good. I'll just pitch this and keep the rest. Zana Urchin, I'm like, I'm not even going to use, I suppose, unless we draw like a second concurrent timelines, right? Lurk is a bit annoying, huh? Okay, well we can't block that anyway, so we don't care then. Uh, I was thinking like maybe... Uh, I, I was thinking like if they open pass... I guess we always just play concurrent timeline lines. Yeah, okay, never mind. I think I'm just talking, talking nonsense there. We'll just play our two mana dude next turn. Our Ionian Hookmaster. TBH doesn't look like much of a Hookmaster, right? Like maybe like a... Hook novice hobbyist, you know? I don't know, okay. Yeah, like, Forge Chief and Sun Archon just feel so bad in this deck sometimes. Uh, I guess we'll just go Overwhelm. Turn into a lifesteal, uh, yes please. That's what I'm talking about. That's so good against Lurk. <laughs> like, insanely good. And it can block pretty much anything and trade. That's really good. Alright, so our hand's looking really bad with these Zonite Urchins and Forge Chiefs. So next turn, depending on what we draw, I'm probably just going to Zonite Urchin, discard the Forge Chief. That's pretty solid. Because we're probably going to lose this Keeper of the Box. I will just block, right? Like, there's no reason not to keep it alive and then just run it into the ground next turn, I suppose. What does it have? It's a plus two, plus zero with Overwhelm. So we can make a 5-2 Overwhelm, with just for the 1 mana. What the heck? I don't think I've ever seen one that early, that's insane. That's actually pretty okay. And we can't really kill Pike anytime soon either. We'd have to like, just draw into it, obviously. Oh, this guy's the biggest, I suppose. Doesn't really block anything though. Does it matter? I guess not. 
The one drops never really find anything good. Oh, like that's pretty bad too. Oh yeah, this is feeling gross. Um, we could parts made whole. We could discard the unit if we sacrifice our Kathy and Mirage here. I'm not gonna block here. This guy can block something else later on. This feels so clunky though. Wait, hold well, on. We have our timelines down, don't we? So next turn we're probably just gonna play Combat Cook. Ah, oh, I don't like this on our urchin whatsoever. Let's go like this. We just need to cycle, and then hopefully our combat cook can help us catch up. Neither of those are super great. We'll just take the one that can block and then see what we can get on the concurrent timelines. Okay, this is pretty good. Fearsome Fury. I'll take that. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. When I kill another unit, drain one also. That's pretty good. So this turn he'll hopefully get at least one free hit on the hatchling, or let us take the damage, or whatever it may be. And the next turn... I'd like to find a get excited for this pike, huh? That's a little bit annoying. Yeah, it's actually really annoying. How are we- because we can't kill the pike now. I mean, we could just go like this. And if they take the one shot here, we can try to Mystic Shot Pike. That's at least one out, right? So I'm okay with sacrificing one of these. And I'm just going to leave this guy alive for now so they can't lurk into with a free quick attack in case they can keep their pike alive or summon another pike. Sorry, I feel like I was babbling super fast there. I'm getting anxious. I haven't played against lurk in a while. Has it received any changes lately to make it good again? I can't, I can't remember anything over the past few patches. Do they even need to run Preservarium in that deck? Like, I guess it's not bad, but... This is also probably going to die. Hmm. Okay. So our Pelt of Castaway is probably going to die. We'll just take the thing that can block. Crushbot's actually a huge unit. Also, Ayula never saw enough play. I think this is such a cool artwork. Um, I see artwork doesn't determine everything, but it's still cool. The golden bow is like super cool. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get any defensive uh, equipment. Like, if the if the pan of, pan of pain was like the pot of pain or whatever, they gave two health. Imagine like him being a seven defense unit right now. That'd be really good. So we're gonna take a lot of damage from Rex Eye. We could just oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he trades off the Rek'Sai, I'm okay with that as well. Uh, that'll put him down to 3, then to 4. Once he heals up from the Fury. So then he can just kill him with Pike with the Vulnerable. So let's just go here. Because when this lurks, this is going to become a 6 anyways. So our Golden Crushback can't block, bike, block Pike anyway. Now what are they going to do about this, right? Like, you you have to lose it somewhere. You either trade it with, with Rek'Sai or with Pike. Okay. Hmm. If we play Blades of the Fallen, well, I guess we'll get at least one equipment in hand anyway. So which one? We'd rather have Combat Reel on the field. Because I think it doesn't attach it directly from here, right? It doesn't go back to our hand and it creates a copy. Yeah, okay, so it just goes directly straight onto the unit. Okay. I just wanted something to be able to discard with parts made whole. Pike is going to level up on the next attack, which is really dangerous. Like, if they bo have Bone Skewer here, I don't know if we can play around that. 
Alright, well, we can go here. Look for something. Quick attack's pretty good. Any challengers? No. We do have a draw spell. Seems good. I like River Shaper. So now we still have enough for parts made hole in Mystic Shot since he has a tune. We are so dead to a Bone Skewer though. We could like Mystic Shot our own unit if we have to. So we can Burst Speed spawn a 2 2. Or 3 2, excuse me. And then just swing in like this. Alright, they're going down to 7. I don't know if that's enough for us to get out of this though. We have two Fearsome Blockers. We have two Burn in Hand. Finding five extra burn damage seems kind of unlikely. And I'm just going to save this combat reel in hand so we can parts made whole next turn. I also want to be able to kill our own unit. That's maybe one reason to keep Mystic Shot, huh? Huh. We could play Caitlyn and then double shoot Pike. Seems kind of bad. This is like such on the nice edge here. When I kill an enemy, I strike the weakest enemy. So we could just take 7 damage from Pike. Doesn't seem very safe. Rexa will probably be up to 9 power, unless they find the free fish that attacks for free. What's he called? The Snapjaw Swarm, that's right. Then they'd be above enough power to level Rexai. Or I don't like that. Uh, yeah, that would wipe our board, okay. So we could... Pike's 4 mana though. Oh goodness, how do we get out of this? How badly do we lose if we try to kill Pike here? Is it just the best play though? Like, is it better than just shooting our own unit? The answer's there. You'll find it. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. I have no idea. Tell me what I should do there. It seems so bad. Like, they have only two cards in hand. They'd have to have another Bone Skewer, or I guess they could have Pike Spell. Ah! Gosh darn it. I hate Pike, man. Alright, we'll play one more. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever won a game once Pike's leveled up. Obviously, I don't think it's supposed to be easy, but... Man, that's so difficult to deal with. We just never found our Get Excited either, right? Like, it'd been so much easier if we could chuck one spell at him at some point, rather than having to... You know, double spell. I don't know. I guess we should just shoot our own unit there, but like... Then that first spell gets right negated. Then we have to use our second spell on our unit. Then they push a ton of damage, we're forced to block down our board. Maybe we can come back from that point, but it seems difficult. Alright, Misfortune Twisted Fate. What are we looking for? Probably going to keep Jax. And I love Combat Cook, but we're really looking to go at a quick pace this game. So we'll look for our cheaper units. Yeah, like this is, this is fine. Okay, I'm pretty happy with just Forge Chief here. Trade and get the mana back in case we draw our concurrent timelines next turn. Jax's 3-2 quick attack is also very nice. He's probably just going to have to end up blocking, though, on, like, turn 3. We just can't take that much damage, right? He'll end up blocking a another Legion Rear Guard, something like that. Honestly, depending on what we get, we could just counter-strike him. 
but that seems kind of bad. It just depends what units they play, I suppose. What could they have, like... If they have mi Misfortune here, I think we just shoot her, right? Because that was their whole turn. And I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna take this damage, I think. I'm just gonna play Jax next turn. Honestly, I probably could have even Blades of the Fall into there. Nice, Kaelin's huge. Kaelin's so, so, so good against uh, aggro decks. They still a turn away, at least, from a tight sermon. Oh, what was that, I wonder? I wonder what that was. That was kind of spooky. Do we just shoot it before they have enough mana for Nox and Fervor? I'm okay with that. I don't want to. I don't want to take the extra damage if we can. We're we're still looking so good that like our hand is slow, but they're also. That's actually really cool. Okay, uh, if they're pretty slow, our flash bombs are hitting stuff. We have Jax, who's like halfway to leveling up. Like we're looking okay. We're tried sermon. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll just blaze the fallen and play our Jax. And we'll still have enough mana for Mystic Shot. We really want to find our stuff soon. We're already down to one card in hand. But, like, they can't really get through this turn without losing their board. Like, I'm not even going to block here, because it's only saving one damage. Or, excuse me, I'm not even going to block here. It's only saving one damage, and it just makes Jax too vulnerable to make it rain, or a Twisted Fate red card. So I'm just going to go like this, and then next turn we'll attack with Jax, depending on what we draw, of course, but... They haven't pushed any damage really yet, like, we're, we're feeling pretty okay. If we find, like, Aloof Travelers, I'm feeling really good. If we find, a uh, Forge Chief... Like, boom, 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 it's kind of whatever, I suppose. I mean, there's so many ways that Jax dies there. If we open attack, we push 3 damage, I suppose. But I don't really know, if not, I don't know if that matters too much. Like, I guess it's better than... Okay, that's actually a fantastic draw. They're also getting lots of draw, unfortunately. There we go, finally. Okay. It's way too late now. Like, we're gonna need to hit some actual units soon. We're looking in a little bit of trouble. Hey, Auntie, how's it going? We're playing some timelines with... Caitlyn Jax. It's pretty fun. I played like 13 games last night with it. I went like 70%, 1% almost. Almost out of gold. Feeling pretty good. But we're running out of steam against pirates, even though up to this point we've taken like 3 damage. <laughs> what decks have you been playing since the new expansion? We're losing all of our units here if we block. Anything. So do we just block one? Like, we're, 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 we're doing so well, right? What are these guys ever going to do for us? They attack and they trade into the 1-1 into the one, one Poro. Or are we just save 2 damage? Like, is that ever worth it? We have nothing in hand. I guess we just stall out as long as we can and hope we find something good. Exciting, the usual Pirate Aggro. Yeah, yeah, Pirate Aggro is still doing really well since the update. Did an update today, but I think I'll check it out today. Cool. Orn Kane. Yeah, Orn Kane seems cool. I think Orn's a really fun card. Kane's really good. I think Orn looks really fun, and Kane's just really good. So yeah, definitely not what we're looking for. That's really unfortunate. Um, Go back to Evelyn Banalgy. That's actually really decent. If you, if you look at the new Improvised cards... They have a ton of regions, like all the Weapon Master cards. Stuff like the, the, uh, uh, I can't even think of it, like the Iron and Hook Master, all those stuff have like the really cool improvised stuff. That's so good in Vandal Tree. Okay, we're like dead. We were so good for so long. But this is probably going to be Noxied Fervid, I'd imagine. Rats. We had such a good start-ish. Like it was obviously using a lot of our cards in hand, but... 
We were at three, we were at 17 health on turn six, and we still ended up losing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this isn't bad. You dropped something. I dropped everything. All right, all right, we got rid of Titan Sermon. We have a drain unit. If there's ever been a comeback, as long as they never find a decimate in the top half of their deck. Oh boy. Alright, they don't have any burn spells in hand yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, like Pilgrim and Castaway, Bilgewater, and I, uh, PNZ region. I guess we'll just take the quick attack here. And. Yes! Lifesteal! Lifesteal! Rat, she doesn't get the lifesteal. Unfortunate! That didn't work how I hoped. Because <laughs> I know a lot of the play and zone effects didn't work. But dang, that would have been so good! Oh gosh darn it, they got decimated anyway. GG, GG. Alright, okay, okay. We can't finish at 2 and 3. We gotta finish at least 500. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really not a fan of having... Three Zana Urchins, or is it three Zana Urchins and two Forge Chiefs? Five One Shops is just so bad in a Timeline deck, I feel. Because usually in turn one, you just want to play concurrent Timelines anyways if you have it. And then after that, you're just not going to, like, the One Drops don't transform into anything valuable enough. I don't know. I just don't know what to put in there instead. Maybe I'll mind an experiment or something to mess with. Alright, Trundle Thy Timelines. Cool, cool. Let's see how this can go. Alright, really nice curve, I suppose, but I'm just gonna pitch these three, honestly, and look for timelines. Maybe we'll just ditch it all. It's so much, so important to find timelines. I don't know. We'll see how this works out. Our deck has probably a much lower average curve than them. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. So, usually we're a little bit more aggressive in Mulligans than them, because like, they have stuff like Trundle and Buried in Ice. That like is just so clunk in their opening hand. We can usually curve out a little bit more effectively. Double Caitlin. Okay. I kind of just want to play Caitlyn, honestly. Caitlyn's just such a fun card. I guess we should be a little bit worried about Troll Chant, huh? Well, dang. That's the power of timelines, I suppose. Uh, yeah, there's there's a little bit of trap support, I think. I don't think it was insane. I don't remember anything like catching rats. Okay, I don't remember anything catching my eye so much for like Caitlyn traps, but I know there was the one card, Eclectic um, Collection. It's seven mana. For each ally, plant a mysterious portal and three chimes in the top ten cards of your deck, and plant a flash bomb trap and three poison puff cats on random cards in the enemy deck. So that's pretty cool. But it's in Bandle City, and so I don't know how many Bandle City, you know, Caitlyn decks they run. <laughs> ah, my goodness. Forge Cook, our Combat Cook is just such a good card in these decks. Alright, we've quickly fallen behind. That could actually be pretty decent in a Timelines deck with, with stuff like Zana Urchin that might be discarding or whatever. All right, well, we need our own big units here to trade away. Chief Neck Attack, actually. <laughs> For when our um, 
timelines units transform. That's actually like hilarious. That's like literally an insane buff in this for this deck. Oh, we're gonna go here and here. We could kill this guy, I suppose. And go like this. But four health, we're never really attacking the four health. I'm okay with going like this. Because we can hit it with Caitlyn and get traps to kill them. But I think we just probably just like take the trade where we can, right? Man, I do not like these one drops in this deck. Okay. We'll pass though. I would really like an aloof, aloof travelers. That's also fairly good. Better than Kaylin? Probably. Shadow Assassin, that's what I'm talking about. Always nice to get those super jacked elusives. And the plus one plus one from Chief Knack attack, that's what I'm talking about. Gets out of Mystic Shot range. Hmm, that's pretty annoying. We could just flat play Chompers. Hmm. Or we could just get excited, Chompers. Get excited onto Lady of Blood. Or sorry, onto um, Sting Officer. Then pull with Chompers. Pull Lady of Blood with Chompers. Pushes 10 damage if they don't play any unit. That seems bad. But I'm gonna go for it because we can play Forge Chief anyways to push an extra 2 damage if all they have is Chompers as a blocker. Come on, people. Let's make tomorrow today. Okay, I'm pretty okay with this. Pushing 12 damage is really nice there, I think. Because, like, she's a big unit, but having impact doesn't really matter to us. We have a 5-3 elusive. Chief Knack attack should hopefully actually get some decent value here. Oh, man. Parsemate Hall is so much better when we have an equipment to discard. I'm doing this my way. Snap. That's annoying, too. We'll play Caitlyn. We'll entice them to... Yeah, okay, I'm fine with this. We'll play Caitlyn. Maybe they're like, oh, I should go after Caitlyn instead. But they're probably not. They're probably just going to kill the elusive because they're already down to 8 health. And then we can just discard the combat reel to refill our hand. Oh, snap. They get Vi leveled up already. That's kind of good, actually. If they play an equipment onto her. Yeah, okay. Taking... Uh, beating. Thankfully, again, it's just kind of like onto our units. Hmm. Okay, I'm fine with that. That's actually pretty decent for us because I would have wanted to block. I was probably going to throw my Forge Chief in the way, but this way we can just go wide next turn. And Vi's at 2 health, which is pretty difficult for them to deal with, I think. Like, they can't block Nag Attack, any of this. Have we played a unit this round? No, so we can boom 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 actually again, which is really good. Uh, I guess we just take the big unit. Our open attack is pretty good here, but this guy is such a good card. I think it's honestly worth it. We'll take amulet just in case. Well, I'm. Uh, we're gonna go Pot of Pain. I don't think they're going to have very many units that don't have 3 power at this point. Ooh, Ranger Knight Defector is pretty good. He'll become like a 4-3 plus 1-2. That's pretty good, but I guess it just dies to the first one. 3-5. Get the bonus. So in that case, I guess we'll take Lex Shimmerdal for the Poison Darts. Like, look at that guy's huge! Two impact? Oh! One impact from Pot of Pain and one impact from Chief Neck Attack. That's actually hilarious. Like, now this, this can only die to Vi. That's so funny. Another election. Okay, so I think we just swing in. 
We have three burn in hand. We'll get one extra from Luxury Yordle. We have four impacts on board. Thank you, Chief Neck Attack. Very kind of you. This is actually pretty sick. <laughs> Kindly Tavern Keeper could be pretty bad for us, huh? But I don't think they have a way of getting out of this. They'd have to kill a unit on stack. Then they tap out, though. And there's no way they stop enough to save from get excited. I think we got there. That was a really good turn. Chief Nag Attack, my guy, carrying us hard. <laughs> Let's go. I must say, a satisfactory outcome. A very satisfactory outcome. All right. Well, we finished three and three. Not too shabby. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the deck overall. Like I said, I had some pretty good success with it last night. I'm still just not sold on the idea of having five one drops and three concurrent timelines. Like that just seems kind of clunky. These guys are just such dead draws later in the game. I don't know. Like, Zana Urchin's fine. Probably just to like, get rid of extra concurrent timelines and the Boom 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 Chompers. But I feel like you should have something more than just Combat Cooks or Loof Travelers. Other timelines decks just have such more powerful plays with stuff like the Ice Pillar and Revna, right? Like, maybe, maybe like, just, like let's just scroll down here for a second. What could I even put in here? Like, Augmented Experiment would be pretty cool. Karina might be actually kind of interesting. Plant five Flash Bomb Traps. <laughs> Um, I don't know, like at that point, probably this is getting a bit too expensive. I've just done a ton of great six drops that give a ton of value, I suppose, in PNZ. But Augmented Experimenter is maybe one to mess around with. Also, love playing Chief Knack Attack with even the Primal Monsters. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, like, I've never actually played a deck dedicated Chief Knack Attack, I don't think, but that was like a really, really good hit. Because <laughs> even if they had some way to block all of our units, we were still pushing four damage just from the impact. That's so funny. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much to all of you who have been regular viewers of the past few months. My channel on YouTube doubled in subscribers. My channel on Twitch went from like five to like 26 and I have like 10,000 YouTube views of the past month. So thank you so much, guys. It means a lot. I've really been enjoying hanging out with you all. So I'll catch you next time. Hope you have a good weekend.